Hey, Hammy here coming to you today with the first part of section 9.1 in which we begin our unit on evolution. And so in this video, we want to take a look at Charles Darwin and overall an overview of his theory and also kind of what started him on that journey to that discovery. Okay, first, I think we want to take a look at, before we get too far here, at the two major ideas of his theory. So just kind of his theory of evolution in a nutshell, and two main ideas. Uh, number one, uh, evolution occurs. Evolution, the term evolution or to evolve, means change over time. So his idea was organisms change over time. Life on Earth is not the same now when you look at living things as it was a long, long time ago in the past, okay? And then key idea number two is how that occurs, okay? The process by which Darwin presented this idea of evolution is called natural selection. Darwin was not the first person to put forth an idea of evolution. Uh, it's just that his idea of this natural selection is kind of what stuck and is generally accepted today. Uh, and that's where nature will will select things with beneficial traits. And then they'll be more likely to pass on those traits to their offspring. And those slow changes build up over time. Okay, one of the things that we believe really kicked off his ideas that or the, uh, the thing that sparked his interest in creatures changing over time and this idea of evolution is his his expedition on the ship, the, Her Majesty's ship, the Beagle. Okay. Uh, Darwin uh, went to college to be, well, first off, a doctor. Uh, he was good at, at science. He was really smart. Uh, but the story goes that he was kind of afraid of blood, and it made him queasy. Uh, and so he kind of nixed that idea. And his uh, dad said, well, why don't you go into the church? Be a clergyman like me. And so uh, he was along that path, but he, one of his advisors at college knew that he enjoyed uh, biology. He enjoyed being outside. He grew up in the English countryside. Uh, and so this position came open okay, from the government. They're going on an exploring expedition around the world to map different ports, set up trade routes, that kind of thing. And they needed a naturalist to go along. And his advisor said something to Darwin. Hey, why don't you go along? You're young. He's 22, fresh out of college. Um, you know, why don't you go along and see the world and do this? You'd enjoy this. So he did. And his job was pretty sweet, actually. Uh, he got to ride along on this boat for five years. And every time they stopped at a port, he would hike inland. He'd look along the seashore and he would just collect plants, specimens, animals, uh, rocks, uh, fossils that he'd find, and he just started this collection on the boat. He took detailed notes in his little notebooks, and uh, it's just it was kind of sweet. He could just go around. Uh, didn't have a do any of the trade business or anything like that. And uh, when he was kind of going from port to port, he had books and stuff that he took along to read uh, that influenced his decision as well, or his uh, influenced his ideas as well. Some of the key observations that Darwin uh, noticed when he was on his journey is he was all around the world, South America, Australia, Africa. I mean, they stopped. If you go back and look at the map, he was like everywhere. And so he noticed this great diversity of life on the earth, just weird, amazing creatures, plants everywhere he went. Uh, when he was in South America, he was up in the mountains. He witnessed an earthquake. So he witnessed the earth changing. Also, when he was up in the mountains, he found fossils of sea life. Hmm. How did sea life or these shells get way high up in the mountains? Okay. That uh, kind of gave him the idea that the earth can change very dramatically throughout geological time. Uh, he watched or he witnessed rock ledges that had become beaches. Uh, in other words, or that had been beaches. In other words, he saw these slow, steady geological processes like erosion and that kind of stuff in the, in the effects of, of what that does to the Earth's surface and how the Earth can change. 
Uh, he also dug up and saw fossils that the locals had in different areas of these extinct mammals that were very different than what anything we have today. Uh, for example, was one was this giant ground sloth. Uh, so this is just, he would have sloth, that's just an L. A sloth, and he would have seen a skeleton like this. Uh, today, a museum has kind of put fur and stuff on it to give us an idea of these huge, gigantic grizzly bear or larger uh, sized sloths. Uh, and he said, well, why don't we have those anymore? And he saw things, and why did they go extinct? Uh, why are they so different than anything we have today? And so these, these things here really got him kind of stewing and thinking about how does all this happen? One of the r most important places we think he visited is this little chain of 16 islands off the west coast of South America called the Galapagos. And we'll study them more in class and I have a couple of videos that we'll watch that'll show you kind of what he might've witnessed. Uh, but these islands, because all these different ocean currents kind of meet there, you have <clears throat> cold ones, warm ones, lots of nutrients, uh, very dry and arid. The islands were very, very, very different habitats. And <clears throat> what he noticed on each island is that things like the birds or these Galapagos tortoises were very, had very, very different adaptations. And the locals could tell what island a tortoise came from based on the front of their sh shell. If it had kind of this dome shape here with a real short neck or whether they had kind of this real high arch in the shell with really long necks. Okay, the ones with the dome shells were on islands with lots and lots of vegetation. See all the grass down here. This turtle doesn't have to reach very far, stretch very far to get something to eat. Whereas on the more arid islands, so you can tell this looks drier, more of some scrub brush back here. These turtles could really stand on their front legs and this arch allowed their long necks to really reach up and grab vegetation that was higher up in the air. <clears throat> and so a lot of these creatures that he found on these Galapagos Islands and collected there, uh, he made a lot of notes on and really affected his thinking. Uh, and it's kind of famous. You think Charles Darwin, theory of evolution. Uh, you also think Galapagos Islands as well.